Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a very simple build on the Arduino um, that's going to show you how to take sensor input and use the tone command to create a note uh, that plays and how you can manipulate that note. So to start off with, I'm going to do sort of the cooking show thing and, and show you this is what the final product is going to look like. Uh, I'm just going to connect the power here and we start to hear this buzz. Find a hole that it goes in. There we go. So what I've built here is a very simple device that uses this little gyrometer, um, this little motion sensor that can basically tell whether it's pointed upwards or not. So you can't see it, but you can feel it uh, in person, and this is a very simple sensor that comes in your starter kit. Um, you can feel there's a little ball bearing or something like that in there that moves out of position when the sensor hits about an 80 degree angle, and then it falls back into place when you put it upright. So I've created some very simple code that simply is going to read the state of this sensor to read whether it's upright or whether it's sideways uh, or downward, and uh, is going to take that value and use a very simple loop to say, if it's upright, be silent. If it's sideways, make a sound, and so forth. So the components you'll need are essentially this little tiny sensor, which I'll show you a little bit more, the gyrometer sensor. Uh, this is a piezo buzzer. The buzzer that comes in the starter kit is a little bit different. It's a little bit nicer than this one. It's uh, a little metal disc encased in plastic. Um, this is a simple stripped down one but the idea is the same. It's got two cables on it, a tiny slice of ceramic and a tiny piece of metal that vibrates at a given pitch when you pass current through it. Then we're using the breadboard just to kind of connect these things together, just to kind of make it a little bit easier to work with and easier to see. So actually, you don't need the breadboard. You can do all of this on the Arduino itself, but it makes things a little bit easier. It gives us a little bit more space to work if we use the breadboard. So now that I've shown the final product and, and roughly how it works, um, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble it and talk through how it works. All right, so I'm undoing all of my cables and all of my components, and we can roughly see how things work. Just to point out, uh, I'm using some of the conventional things in the sense that I'm using a red wire for the power. I'm using a black wire for the component that gets grounded. Let's look to the code now. As you've seen, this is what a blank Arduino project looks like. I've named it Upside Down Tone. Um, and the Arduino runs on loops. So first of all, we have a little setup section where we can put all of our variables. Then we have um, the main loop of the code, which is simply going to be another loop that's going to check for uh, the state of the sensor. So there are a couple of things we want to do first. First of all, I'm going to initialize the pin that I'll connect my sensor to. So I'm going to give it a variable name. In this case, we'll call it sensor pin equals a zero. That means analog pin zero. Right down here on, to my perspective, it's the bottom left of the Arduino. There are a set of analog pins. It says analog in a zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I'm simply going to plug one end of a cable into A0, and over here, just anywhere in the breadboard. It doesn't matter, as long as we plug other things into the same row. So right here, that's going to send input to analog pin A0. And that's telling me this variable sensor pin is going to tell the Arduino where to look for data while we're doing this. I'm also going to create a variable that is initially going to be 0. I'll call that sensor value equals 0. I forgot you need a semicolon 
after each of these lines here. So sensor value is going to be the variable where the Arduino puts the input from that sensor. You know, look to pin A0, take the data you get there, store it in the variable sensor value. Right, now in my setup loop, I'm going to first say serial dot begin at 9600 baud's. That's going to initialize the serial port. We want to have um, serial import here so we can get the numerical data. We don't want a simple digital on off kind of input. We actually want, well, in, in the case of most sensors, it doesn't matter so much for this one, we actually want a numerical value. As you get into more advanced Arduino uh, topics, you will have sensors such as potentiometers that can actually return a value uh, between, say, 0 and 1023, you, know, you have a kilobyte of range. In this case, we're really only going to be dealing with on and off, but I'm going to initial, initialize it as a serial analog reading anyway, because that will give you more flexibility later if you want to take this code and build on it. So begin the serial port reading. Now we'll go to the program itself. So the value of the variable that we set before, sensor value, is going to equal an analog reading, an analog read of sensor pin. So this line of code simply says always constantly loop. You know, it's constantly going to run through this set of instructions and it's always going to be updating that variable to whatever the input from the sensor pin is at that moment. So as fast as the program can run, it will be constantly updating this variable. Then, for our purposes, we want to be able to see the, the value. So serial print ln, the sensor value variable. And that will come into play in just a moment. Finally, it's just nice practice to put in delay here. That's going to make the program pause for 100 milliseconds every time. So it's not going to be actually real-time constant updating. Each time it runs through the loop, it's going to pause for 100 milliseconds. It's the amount of time you can barely detect. Um, but for instance, it helps us to see the serial values change on the serial monitor. Then we're going to create a pair of loops um, that are going to create a tone or cancel that tone. With the tone command, you always need to follow it up with no tone in order to turn the sound off. Otherwise, the things that you're trying to do won't actually work. So first of all, we need if sensor value, that is if the number that we're getting from the sensor is less than 1023, bracket, it's going to automatically give me another a closing bracket. So if the sensor value is less than 1023, that means we're going to put a tone on pin 4, and that tone is going to be at 440 hertz. So this means we're going to plug our piezo buzzer into pin 4, and that's going to produce a tone of 440. So I'm going to take my yellow, um, my yellow cable, plug into digital pin 4, and again I can plug this anywhere on the breadboard, doesn't matter. I just need to make sure to plug the piezo buzzer in on the same line. Then, oops, I want to be outside of this little bracket and start a new one. So if sensor value equals, double equal sign, 1023, then bracket 
no tone on pan four. So essentially, what I'm doing here is telling the program if the sensor value is anything less than 1023, which is the maximum, then create a tone. And I've simply chosen A440 because it's a famous common pitch. If the sensor value is 1023, then cancel that tone, be silent. And the program will continually go through here. Um, so why have I chosen 1023? Well, with five volts going through the breadboard and going through the sensor, this sensor can return a value anywhere between 0 and 1023. And in the case of this sensor, it's going to be either or. It's going to be 1023 when it's upright, or it's going to be 0 when it's on its side. A lot of other analog sensors, as we'll get into in one further lesson, a lot of other ones allow you to go somewhere in between. So for example, this is a potentiometer. Um, it's just a dial. What it's going to do is uh, attenuate the current by saying this is zero, all the way up here to the other side would be 1023, and then it'll have you know 1024 values in between. So you could set it to like 200, 400, 600, something like that, all the way up to 1023. So this is why I've initiated this as an analog reading. Um, and why I'm not simply checking for a binary state up or down, uh, because I want to give you code that you can work with and you can use with other kinds of sensors. For now though, 1023 means upright. Anything other than 1023 means it's on its side and it's going to play a tone. And that's all the code. That's all there is for this whole program. Um, so now it's time to sort of assemble the things that we're going to be working with. So the, the gyrometer has a couple of little pins on it. You could plug it directly into a breadboard um, or directly into the Arduino, but it's a little bit tricky because the pins are so short. So it's useful to take these extender cords, the ones with uh, a pin on one side and a hole on the other side, plug one into here and the other into here. Now, it doesn't really matter which one. So now we're going to have one cable for power, one cable for data. So if we want this to work, we need to bring power over to our breadboard. So I'm going to find the, the port that is marked 5V for 5 volts. Plug the red wire in here, and I'm going to plug it into the positive side on the far left side of the breadboard. So that's going to carry power from the Arduino over here, and it's going to power every line here on the far left side. So what I then need to do is plug other cables in to give power to my sensor and my buzzer. So I'm going to set one of these right in here. So now there is current passing through my sensor. Then I'm going to use this port from before, the very first one we plugged in, and plug the other one right in there. So now what this is going to do is there is current being passed from the Arduino to this sensor. And if the sensor is upright, it's going to pass all of that current through. If it's low, it's going to stop. So the value that it returns is going to be either 1023 or nothing, and you'll see the values on the computer go downward and downward and downward to zero um, as you leave it sitting. So the other thing I need to do now uh, will be to connect my sensor, uh, my speaker, sorry. But I'm going to go ahead and validate the code. It works. I'm going to send it to the Arduino by hitting upload. Good, the Arduino flashes a little bit and we have our code ready to go. The other thing I'm going to show you is the serial monitor. So this little icon, it looks sort of like a magnifying glass, is the serial monitor or you can find it on a top menu as well. So I'm going to click that and it will pop up 
And in real time here, it's delayed by 100 milliseconds each time because of that little delay. Otherwise, it would stream extremely fast. Right now, it's showing us these sort of random values in the 500s. Um, it's not fully sensitive to, to being moved upside down, but the values sometimes drop to the 400s. But if I turn this right up, it's going to lock in at 1023 constantly. So that's the way that this code works. The value is always 1023 when it's upright. If it goes down, the value drops. Up, down, up, down. So now this is working. So what I'm going to need to do is plug my piezo buzzer into the bread box first. This is going to be what transmits the data. This red one will go in here and get the power, and we should be able to, yep, I'll hold it up. So, we're, oops, there we go. So we're now working, and if I let the sensor fall, we hear the buzz. And that's all there is to it. So it's a very, very simple device. And I'm going to just point out the components one more time. So first of all, I have this sensor, which has two pins on the bottom, which I've just connected the female ends here into the breadboard. One of those ends is receiving power. One of those ends is outputting the data. This blue cable is taking the data over to analog pin zero. The computer is reading what it gets there and um, storing that as sensor value. If it receives 1023, which it's doing right now, it does nothing. If it receives something less than that, it's going to tell the buzzer to buzz at 440 hertz. That's 440 vibrations per second, or A in most modern tuning systems. The piezo buzzer is down here. It's connected in much the same way. Red wire gets power. Black wire receives data. Yellow wire connects it to the Arduino. So in other words, we're getting input from the sensor. It's going through here, through the blue wire, into the analog pin. Then this pin is connected to digital pin 4. And it's sending 440 out here into the buzzer, which is vibrating. So that's all that's, that there is to this project. But this code, as a basis for variation, gives you the chance to do some other things with the Arduino. You could add a different kind of a sensor on here, such as a proximity sensor, a potentiometer, a light sensor, something like that, um, to, to affect the tones. You can change the pitch by changing the value that you give to the piezo pin. Or you could create other forms of output. You could add um, an LED in here so that the light comes on when it's up or the light comes on when it's down. Or perhaps a red light goes on when it's up, a green light goes on when it's down. Um, really, the variations are, are infinite. Um, and once you begin to experiment with different kinds of input, then you can really get creative. You can allow the sensor to drive the pitch, for example. You can turn the pitch up and down with the potentiometer. You can have the light grow brighter or dimmer with the potentiometer. You can have these variables go together. You can have these variables vary inversely with one another so that as the pitch goes up, the light grows dimmer, for example, things like that. So. This is just a little bit of an introduction to kind of the power of working with code and uh, of using code to generate sound. You can see just from this very simple demonstration, sorry, that's annoying. You can see from this very simple demonstration that there are a lot of possibilities. Once you're working with uh, information in numerical form, you can do a lot of different things with it. And one of those things is to create musical sound.